Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. UK. This is part one of my version 3 BB-8. So I've already built two versions. The first one was a ball balancing robot where the head balanced on an empty ball. Version two I've got right here, which is my first attempt at putting the drive in the ball. So it's more like the real BB-8, which is the stage droid we've seen at Star Wars Celebration. Um, the film premieres and various other events. And I should point out that that droid is not the one used in the movie. In the movie there are seven different puppets which are on sticks and various other rigs. The stage droid is the one that most builders are trying to build which is a sort of independent one that can drive around. So I've already started building my version 3. I've started to 3D print the ball in the similar fashion to the way I did version 2. I'll have another look at that shortly. But today I'm going to discuss the key differences that are going to be in version 3, which I basically missed out of version 2. Um, and now we've seen more footage of that stage droid driving around, a lot more people have started to sort of discover how it works. So let's look at some analysis. So I've got one of the uh, toys here, this is the Hasbro, I've taken the middle out of it so I can demonstrate um, how we think the real stage droid actually works. So quite a few people have done some analysis now of footage of the red carpet and um, celebration at Anaheim when we first saw this independent droid. Um, and you'll notice I put some blue tape on here on two triangular panels. And it would appear what's happening is that um, in fact this droid is driving rather like my version 2 in a single axis. It's always driving like this and, and then it's turning. So you'll never find that it drives forward and then suddenly rolls completely this way. It can move a little bit this way to lean and bank and that's how it steers. So there's some footage out there on YouTube of it driving in a circle but what you'll find is the ball is turning and we've always got these two triangular panels with these patterns and these patterns. These are always on the side. Now there are eight of these triangular panels so it's a bit of a coincidence that these are always on the side um, and that would lead us to believe that um, in fact this thing is always driving in one direction and then steering and banking as it goes and you can pretty much see that when BB-8 drives in a big circle that you can see these panels moving round and always staying on the two sides there. Somebody has even done an analysis of the stage droid here, this is Celebration at Anaheim and drawn over the axis and identified those two triangular panels. Um, it's only a short video but it's really worth looking at and if you look at the rest of the footage you can see it is consistent and it's consistent with the red carpet at the premiere. So uh, thanks to Jens who's put this up, I'll put a link in the description to this video so you can have a look. Now there's also another image that came out of a TV documentary around the time of the premiere showing this frame um, and if you look carefully it appears to have um, an axis coupling point um, on each side. It's kind of hard to spot. Um, but it would appear there is an axle running through the middle. Now, I don't think this is the stage droid because the frame is quite thick and I think that the magnetic head coupling wouldn't be able to attract through this, uh, particularly if you look at the very top where the circles are, you can see there's a big flap there. So to carry on with that contour, that's going to make the frame quite thick. And to the right, you can see some quite big panels. To the left, you can see what we think is um, probably the head mounting. So there's quite a lot of discussion over this image which you can find in the BB-8 Builders Club. Um, even if this is one of the puppets in the movie, it would appear they've tried to keep it consistent and run everything on a single axis. I also wanted to add that there's a website called HowBB8Works.com which has a couple of solutions for a BB-8, but both of them appear to be wrong based on this information. It looks like speculation from a couple of guys who wrote this website some time ago and it hasn't been updated since. If you have a look in the BB-8 Builders Group, um, pretty much everyone now thinks this thing drives on a single axis, either with an axle or a hubless wheel or whatever, but it basically definitely drives forward and steers as it goes. There are a couple of other builders who are doing um, basically giant spheros with a, a robot that drives around inside the ball. Um, I should also add that Sphero had nothing to do with building the real BB-8, not the stage droid and not the movie droids, despite some information that came out early on suggesting that um, the Sphero technology was you know, behind the stage droid. That just isn't the case. It appeared Disney have a shareholding in Sphero and they made it up for fun. So there's some more links in the description um, about that, including interviews with the Pinewood crew who did build the real BB-8, and also interviews with both co-founders of Sphero stating they had nothing to do with it. All right. I've already started to print the main ball for version 3, so this is it here. Uh, this is slightly wider than version 2. The one I did for version 2 was 200mm wide, 
This is about 300 mil wide, which means it can tip further this way. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, now this is made up of 20 sections. I've got 10 of them here, so this is half the ball. And each of these sections is taking about four and a half hours to print. So we're talking about 20 of those. So um, around 100 hours of printing straight just to make the ball here. And I've got these rim parts which these attach to, and the whole thing is printed in ABS on the Lulzbot Tazzies, and these things do fit on the bed quite well. There's a little bit of warpage, so there's some sorting out to do, but on the whole we can make this whole structure, and then we can solvent weld the whole thing together with acetone to make it nice and strong, and this is what I did before. In the previous version, I had um, essentially a hubless wheel that allowed this thing to drive this way, and then I'd implemented a flywheel inside there full of two pence pieces, and that allowed the droid to spin on the spot, which worked pretty well. Especially if I ramped up the flywheel in one direction and then kicked it back the other way, the whole thing would spin round. What I neglected to put in was any form of um, ability to shift mass sideways so that I can bank and turn, which is a bit like leaning on a bicycle, but obviously if we offset the main axis and we drive, then this thing will go round in a circle. So this time I'm going to build another axis that allows it to shift, which will also help with dynamic stability. It's all going to be uh, stabilised up with an inertial measurement unit and run the motors through a PID controller, as I did before for driving this way. Uh, but this time it's going to do it in two axis, and of course it'll be able to drive slightly sideways, but um, it won't be able to continue rolling in that direction. It really is only for stabilisation and steering. So what a few of the builders are doing is building a droid with an axle, so an internal hub inside the ball, an axle that's coupled to the ball on each end, and then having basically a motor that turns this axle with some ballast in the bottom, so that that turns the outer ball against the inner hub. Uh, now that's an okay approach for scale model droids, if you're doing a half scale or something, but as you get up to this scale you need quite a lot of torque. So the motor I used before to drive my version 2 was one of these windscreen wiper motors. And that was right in the bottom of the ball with a wheel which was driving. So this was driving around the outside and that was basically what was driving it along. Now I believe these motors are rated at something like 80 kilograms to the centimetre of torque. Which means that a one centimetre radius on this drive shaft, the stall torque of the motor will stop turning when you put an 80 kilogram load on it. And that's quite a lot of torque. So um, in addition to that, I had a 5 to 1 ratio because I had a 100mm wheel on here, which has a circumference of 300mm. The circumference of this ball, of course, is a metre and a half, so that's five times as much torque and a 5 to 1 reduction. So that's really quite a lot of torque. If you wanted to have a motor that could turn that much torque around the centre point, um, then you're going to need a fairly hefty motor. So this may be how the stage droid works. There are some motors that can do it, like the ones on industrial robot arms, but those are harmonic drive gearboxes, and those cost around three to four hundred pounds second hand each in money, whereas a wiper motor you can pick up for about 20 quid on eBay. So um, the other issue, of course, is having the motor mounted on the drive shaft means you're putting the motor really high, which makes it unstable, and you really want to keep that mass at the bottom. So you could put the big motor at the bottom and drive um, a sprocket and chain or drive belts and pulleys to drive this. But to get the same ratio out of this, I'd need a 30 mil sprocket or pulley on the motor and a, a 15 centimeter pulley, so six inches on here, which means the middle of my droid is blocked up with this gigantic pulley. And I really need to pivot the head control arm around the center of this ball as well. So it's really in the way. So I did have some crazy plans to have a gimbaled pulley on the middle here that can lean all around so the motor can lean and not stay parallel with the drive shaft. Um, and I also need to do that for the side to side axis. So that means having another pulley in another motor. So basically all of the droid is just going to be full of pulleys and uh, drive belts or chains. So uh, basically what I'm going to do is not do that. I'm going to put the motor right at the edge where it's got the maximum leverage point. I know it goes fast enough, and I've got really good control over that. Um, it gives me the maximum resolution for the dynamic stability rather than trying to drive this axle with a massive load on. I mean, this thing is a half meter diameter wheel. There's so much torque required to turn it and keep control of it. I just can't see that being practical for hobbyists. Hopefully someone will prove me wrong. So basically we're gonna build another kind of carriage that goes in this channel driven by the wiper motor with a 100 mil wheel, and then we're going to additionally put the side to side axis in. And the way that's gonna work is by having the carriage, in fact, carrying an axle going the other way. And then we're going to have another motor 
and it drives on a track that brings it sideways and on top of that again is going to be the flywheel so this whole thing can turn so there's quite a lot of motors to fit in here these are really quite heavy but you do want a lot of mass in the bottom before i had to put in lead shot and also had all of that weight in two pence coins in the flywheel that keeps that mass really low that's really the only way to keep it stable i will be using dynamic stability again with an inertial measurement unit and a pid controller for both axis and that really does reduce the wobble and that's really the only way you can build one of these droids but we'll talk about the motion control in a minute if i can't get both of these wiper motors in because they are quite substantial then my side to side carriage is going to be made of smaller motors like these ones but several of them maybe even four of them that drive that carriage sideways so sort of on the corners of the carriage and on top of that will be the flywheel which will always be parallel with the ground to spin this on the spot i just wanted to say um, a couple of extra things about building scale droids so there are some builders who've successfully built an axle drive system and they've built them half scale or less and so it seems logical that you, if you can build a half-scale one, then you only need double the motor power, right, to build a full-scale one. But that's not actually the case. So if I take this block here and um, I make it bigger, so this is half-scale in all dimensions, if I make this uh, twice as big, I'm making it twice as big in this dimension and in this dimension, and I'm making it twice as big in this dimension. So uh, basically it's a cubed function, and what you actually end up with is something that's eight times the volume and therefore there's eight times the mass and you need eight times the torque and eight times the power now balls are going to work out slightly differently but it's definitely more than double so if you're going to do a half scale test and then double everything you need to consider that actually the motor torque is much more than double and so is the power requirement last time i built my own controller which is this one this has got an arduino uno inside and a, boot, a bluetooth shield and the droid also has an arduino mega with the bluetooth shield on so what i'm actually doing is sending um, digital data straight over a serial link from the transmitter to the receiver so all of these sticks are getting read as analog ins the buttons are digital ins and so on so that seemed like a really good approach just to get that digital data rather than hacking an rc controller that's doing you know analog to digital to analog to digital and, and back again so um this works okay but what the way i did this was that this just belts out data 100 times a second and the droid main loop runs when there's data so effectively the timer for sampling the inertial measurement unit and adjusting the motor speed running 100 times a second is locked to the timer by the transmitter um, i'm also reading two inertial measurement units in the droid to keep it stable one on the head stick and one on the main hub so those are reading the angle 100 times a second and adjusting the motor speed 100 times a second to stay stable as it goes along so it's effectively balancing in motion a bit like a segway scooter so the challenge with that is the i squared c switch that i used can only switch at 100 times a second which means it can't be reading both of those inertial measurement units at 100 times a second the most it's ever going to do is 50 times a second and i'm also pretty sure with all of that going on in fact it must be running slower than 100 times a second um, every so often there's a weird glitch and some stuff happens and it looks like a buffer overflows and the droid goes shooting off without me and i can't stop it it doesn't happen very often but it's a little bit worrying so i think i need a different approach approach here really what i need is some flow control so the droid sends data to this saying it's time for the data send me the data please and this sends the data back and I make sure that that can run easily 100 times a second or slow it down to 50 times a second if I need to and make sure that the buffer doesn't overflow on the inertial measurement unit as well and check that I can read that uh, quicker than it's writing to the buffer or at least at the same speed so that I'm really locking my data to a timing loop and I think that timing loop should be running on the droid really not remotely over Bluetooth by the transmitter so um, basically the transmitter and receiver and electronic design is going to be quite different this time i'm actually going to do some tests in the main loop to see how fast it's really running um, typically what you do is set a timer up to say if 100 milliseconds or more has expired it's time for the next event but it could be much longer it could be 200 by the time that comes around so we need to really test that loop and check that it can actually run 100 times a second and slow it down if it can't to make this super reliable Here's a bit of a look in the inside of this, but check out the entire series. It's a 10 part series for this build to see how it works. Um, I just wanted to point out the flywheel here, which is full of two pence coins, and that rotates round to push the droid in the other direction. Um, and what I did with this was use two inertial measurement units. So there's one tucked away in here, 
and there's one here which is on the head control arm and those inertial measurement units are there to measure the angle constantly um, and make sure we can correct the motor speed as I say a hundred times a second to keep this thing stable so what I did was I had this one to um, stabilize the main motor hub driving forward inside the ball and the other one was to stabilize the head control arm um, now there's two things I'm going to be, be doing differently with the next version the first one is that these inertial measurement units have gyroscopes, accelerometers and magnetometers in the problem with that is the magnetometer gets confused by all the spinning metal and also probably the other magnets that hold the head on and so on due to the magnetic head coupling so the plan for the next build is to use inertial measurement units that don't have the magnetometer in. So I'm going to be using some that only have the gyro and the accelerometer, but we'll be looking at that in future parts. The other thing I'm going to be doing differently is only using one inertial measurement unit on the main hub inside, and then using that angle to calculate the angle we need for the head control arm to keep that stable as the droid is driving along, which is of course possible. Um, this was a bit of a crazy idea really, um, although it was quite useful because I have no position feedback on the head control arm back to front so I was using the distance in degrees between the two inertial measurement units to do the end stops on this head control arm. The next issue I really want to solve is the head control arm so the one I built before was okay uh, but it didn't centre very well and um, I had some issues with the gear ratio on the motor that pushed it backwards and forwards so I had one sort of big chunk that got pushed backwards and forwards by some 3D printed gears and another already geared motor but the gear ratio on that was too low really so I need a much higher ratio motor if I was going to do it that way I then had servos that moved the head side to side um, and they were more than capable of pushing it the distance I need to so remembering that that um, head control arm is now going to be mounted on the other axis that entirely moves side to side um, I really don't need to move it very far probably only 10 or 15 degrees so the approach for the new one is to have um, essentially in the middle a universal joint um, which is going to have the head on it and then we're going to have two servos that kind of push that in a triangle so those are going to be two servos like so and so with the leverage of those two servos they can push and pull and they can effectively pull that arm all the way round and I think I can get some fairly high power servos that will move in a triangle like that probably 30 kilogram to the centimeter torque servos and that should be more than capable of pushing that head control arm just that short distance we need to and obviously when the droid is static and the head moves forwards the hub at the bottom rotates backwards to counterbalance so you actually get much more movement that's the end of part one obviously I've got quite a lot more printing to do another 50 hours maybe so I'm going to get all that done and come back in part two to put the rest of this ball together and start planning the main internal carriage. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to check out more updates on this project. And don't forget to look back through the parts for version two and version one if you like. There's also some links to the social media pages in the description to this video.